South Americans were too big, too strong and had too much ball for country. And if you were lucky enough to be there, you would have seen one of the world's great players, Hugo Porter, the Puma's captain in full flight. He was the general and called the shots to perfection. He was hardly tackled and kicked amazingly well and passed brilliantly with time in abundance. Best for country was David Carter, the number eight, who tackled himself to a standstill. If it hadn't been for Carter and Newcastle breakaway Gareth Wanford, the score may have reached record proportions. The Argentinians have come from Canada for two test matches here before heading across the Tasman to do battle with the All Blacks. Henry Moskowska started his aldermanic career today with a visit to the Maitland Council Chambers. He stood as an independent in the by-election, beating the ALP candidate John Martin on a platform of providing better childminding and sporting facilities for West Ward. Well at the moment we're very short on sporting facilities. Uh, we find that we've got three or four different organisations, sporting organisations, and we have over 200, 250 kiddies or children who are registered in those organisations and just with two ovals to participate in their sports and, and, and games and competitions are just fine, we just haven't got enough. So, you know, we wouldn't want at least two or three more extra ovals in that area. In 1888, the Maitland Mutual Building Society was formed by residents to assist the locals in purchasing their own homes. Now the Building Society has assets of $18 million and has moved its main office into the heart of Maitland's business area in High Street from Church Street. The Maitland Mutual has two other branches, one in Rutherford and the other in East Maitland. The new office has been operating for the past three weeks in a bid to iron out any wrinkles before yesterday's official opening. All went smoothly, with a large crowd of local businessmen and a few from Newcastle and Sydney turning out for the occasion. The chairman stressed the importance of the building society retaining independence and said the move was specifically to give a more up-to-date image. The official opening was performed by Maitland's Mayor, Alderman Pat Hughes. I'm saying that if they really believe that our problems are going to be solved by the abolition of the 17.5% loading, they are kidding themselves. The fact of the matter is that 17.5% paid for four weeks annual leave equates to 70%, if you like, of a weekly wage, spread over a year $4 a week for a person on $300 a week. Now, are we really going to solve the problems for $4 a week? The Secretary of the Newcastle Trades Hall Council, Peter Barrick, agrees with Mr Crean. He says unions are already doing much in the call for economic restraint and that will be reflected in tomorrow's national wage case decision. We think it's more than enough and what we would like to see is some evidence from other sectors of the community making similar contributions. We believe if that were to happen, uh, then the, this call, these calls that are taking place, attacking one, sex, attacking one section of the community, uh, wouldn't stand up under any sort of scrutiny. Will some restraint, do you think, be reflected in tomorrow's wage case decision? I think that uh, the, my personal opinion is I think that the Industrial Commission will comply with the uh, centralised wage fixing system and grant a full flow on of the 2.3%. Peter Rundle, meantime, from the Newcastle Chamber of Commerce and Industry, supports the idea of abolishing the holiday loading and can see it as a necessity for economic improvement. The holiday loading is one of several costs that add on to the cost of employing labour in this country. And I think it's probably a very uh, least painful uh, thing to do away with to reduce the cost of high labour costs in this country.
committee is being headed by Alderman Graham Dunkley and is similar to other groups being set up in the state to assess the because, effect uh, of the fringe benefits tax on a, a council tax. operations. Uh, the committee will be looking at the use of council vehicles, payment of employees' telephone bills, employee accommodation and entertainment expenses. Graham Dunkley says the tax may put an added financial burden on the ratepayers. We have millions of dollars worth of equipment that must be uh, under surveillance 24 hours a day. And this tax is going to cost council money simply to provide that service. It's going to uh, affect our ability to service the people of Maitland through having our offices available on the phone, uh, by call out at night because the, the uh, uh, vehicles have to be available, and local ratepayers are going to have to pay a tax for the service that uh, is essential to their wellbeing. The issue has been a long-running battle for those opposing it since late 1983. The chemical control order released in March changed the original toxic waste dump proposal at Wallaroo to allow Planning and Environment Minister Bob Carr's approval of a non-toxic waste dump scheme. And it's the changes by the State Pollution Control Commission which have concerned citizens questioning the authority's classification of what is and what isn't toxic waste. The Wallaroo Group has sent a telegram to the Minister asking for a moratorium of the dumping until a detailed environmental study of the area is completed. And they've now turned to the trade union movement for support. Our group has made approaches to um, the Trades Hall Council and also to the Transport Workers Union. Now, um, both myself and, and Mr Moffat from the Oyster Farmers will be addressing uh, the Trades Hall Council uh, tomorrow evening and uh, we're basically presenting our case for assistance. The group for Wallaroo say the fight is not over. Tomorrow night's meeting will decide whether the trade union movement will support them and then it's a matter of deciding on what action to take next. We sought permission to address council uh, to bring us up to date on events that have happened since the last time they addressed us. So at this point of time we're not sure what they'll be asking us uh, but we've had a commitment in the past to supporting the residents of Wallaroo. Since its introduction in the 1940s and 50s from Japan, the Pacific Gigas oyster has threatened to outnumber its more famous and more edible cousin, the Sydney rock oyster. Oyster farmers have met with government officials and decided on a plan to reduce the numbers of the Pacific Gigas in the Port Stephens area. Because the Gigas hasn't fully adapted to tidal conditions, it can be killed off if it's taken out of the water for more than two weeks. The Sydney rock oyster, on the other hand, can survive out of water for a lot longer. Local oyster farmer Rod Moffat says the plan will help eradicate what could have been a major problem for the oyster producers. Because of the difference in the, uh, the shelf life or the ability to live out of water of the two species, we're finding success in uh, taking the oysters out of water and, uh, for 14 days and um, that kills the, uh, the Pacific oyster which hasn't got the shelf life and then we just, uh, that eliminates it off, off that uh, cultivation method that we're using for the rock oyster and uh, we go on with it again then. Drivers and navigators from Newcastle, Colo and Kempsey are taking part in the two-day event. Points from the competition go towards determining the East Coast Tri-Challenge champion. The other rounds are held in Kempsey and later this year at Colo. Eight classes of off-road vehicles cover all types of both standard and modified models. It may not be everyone's idea of a relaxing weekend, but there's plenty of interest in this sport, with the buggies reaching speeds of up to 120 kilometres per hour on the 3.8 kilometre dirt track. Best times determine the eventual winner. Major racing gets underway tomorrow.
led to by a lot of... Tracy Brown of Warners Bay and Glen Elith of Burrigal were chosen from Year 11 students throughout the region <laughs> to attend the Sixth National <laughs> Capital Seminar in Canberra in August. Year, year the aim of the seminar is to give students an understanding of how the nation um, is administered and going to work and, if I ask Jim, look, I might ask to give you them some the small question. role in that so function. The first one. Well, we'll attend seminars and I suppose we'll have to get to know each other but also we'll have formal duties. We'll have to address speakers, we'll have to thank speakers and also chair meetings. You'll get the chance to speak to politicians. Glenn, do you think they'll want to listen to youth? Well, I feel that they'll probably have a keen interest in what the youth of our nation, how they feel and things like that because uh, the youth of today are the voters of tomorrow. And what will they ask the Prime Minister should they bump into him in the corridors of power? I think I'll suggest to him an allowance for senior school students because it's so hard trying to study and there's lots of money that's required from your parents and um, so I'd like an allowance. Yes, the new withholding Mr. tax Walker is very critical of means, Treasurer Paul Keating's opinion, latest decision and the opinion of most on a new withholding tax on foreign borrowings. Will have to In short, he says it's further bad news for the housing industry oh, yes. and for interest rates. The new withholding tax for foreign borrowings means, in my opinion and the opinion of most economists, that interest rates for housing will have to rise in this country. Now, that's the very opposite of what Mr Keating was predicting at the start of this year, and uh, I think a disaster for homeowners and certainly for anyone that wants to borrow money. So the Housing Minister is hopeful the withholding well, uh, tax will be scrapped at next week's week, Labor Party Labor conference, Party, but, I think but he added he thought Paul Keating, Keating should go changed. further than just that. I think it's about time that Mr Keating changed course and uh, admitted that he was wrong about housing interest rates and uh, uh, started looking after the interests of the housing industry of this country. Mr Walker was in the Hunter today opening a new Department of Housing office in Toronto. He took the opportunity to also say that the decision to build 113 Department of Housing apartments in Thobby's Beach was both very and Newcastle is a tremendous need, particularly aged uh, accommodation is desperately needed in Newcastle. And my job as Minister of Housing is to see those people have a roof over their head. And why in the East End rather than in an outlying area? Well, because uh, the people are entitled to live in the centre of Newcastle, which was pretty dead and is now coming back to life. And the government's very pleased to, to save taxpayer money by putting housing there where all the existing services are. It uh, some costs uh, the government something like $15,000 a block for land out in the west of Newcastle in hidden charges when you have to build schools and uh, roads and hospitals and the like. It only costs you 1000 to do it in the centre of Newcastle. Providing assistance and advice to the marketplace is what the Inventors Association of Australia is all about. And that was the message from National General Manager Ivor Hinge at a meeting of the Newcastle branch last night. In fact, successful commercialisation of Australian ideas is what inventors today aim for. Peter Cusworth has just entered the competitive Japanese market with these simple yet effective ideas. And that's where the secret lies. This is a, a multi-purpose coat hanger, we call it the super hanger, and it's used mainly for people that are going away on holidays, or business people, or if you've got a boat, or um, just for drying clothes. And it's a, quite a simple product, it's six coat hangers, it's actually 12 coat hangers in one. There's a little clip there that you can clip onto, say, your bathroom, or a hook, or somewhere, and you can hang, just hang clothes. And it comes in you know, several colours that are all in colours of today, in vogue. And what about the other invention there? This is a golfing product called a, a, a telltale, which is a, a product that, it's an anti-sway device. It'll, it'll, it'll tell you when you're swinging your club if you're rocking forward or if you're rocking back or from side to side. And it works on a lens effect. Very, very simple. What about uh, the traditional image of inventors? Is it uh, nowadays that you, you have to be scatterbrained? Uh, it's it, not really, no. You, uh, you find that a lot of us are. I think you've got to be scatterbrained to sort of, you know, come up against the brick walls all the time and be able to climb over them and continue with your product and, you know, and your project.
After last weekend's 5 by driving of the expensive Super City side here in Adams Town Oval, Newcastle United has really come together as a team. There were many solid performances last weekend, but none were more impressive than frontman Mark Jones and Sil Ingham, who each scored two goals. Ingham was electric, and it's been performances like that that has left coach Peter Irving with wraps for the young redhead. In the, uh, well, I think in a lot of years I've been in football. I've never seen anybody as quick as him, you know. And what sort of future do you see for the youngster? Well, he's got a good future, as I say, if he's prepared to work hard at the game and, uh, just, you know, keep his feet on the ground. He can go, he can go all the way. He could play for Australia, uh, in my opinion. This weekend, United play the undefeated competition leader, Sydney Croatia, and are out to avenge a 4-0 loss in the first round. Faith, the starter in ideal 15 degree conditions in the annual race on the coast. And, and the top flight Sydney runner Andrew Lloyd retained his title uh, one last year now. and further lower the mark set a few years ago by the champ De Castella, who of course is currently preparing for a gold medal hunt in Edinburgh at the Commonwealth Games. Lloyd ran it in 31 Lloyd beat Australian professional champion Glenn Ritchie, a sports star finalist of last year. Another Central Coast athlete, Bill Norton, placed third in a well-run race. Sydney sider Carol Shewallow set a new ladies' time of 37.54. She beat Margaret Ricardo into second place and Karen Salmon into third. we have a lot of women who are looking to return to the workforce and who are looking for office work but who don't have modern skills. They've probably learnt to type on an old manual or electric typewriter and can't use a word processor. We've also had a lot of employers looking for senior office workers with modern skills who've had a lot of trouble finding them so by putting this course on we've sought to marry the two together. It's the first time a course such as this has been held at the Newcastle Technical College for mature age students. The 15 students will attend the 15-week course full-time, learning the more specialised office skills such as computing, word processing, bookkeeping and typing. However, the course will also include the developmental side of training, improving the students' self-esteem and skills for looking for a job after being out of the workforce for some time. Well, how it works is it's federally funded by the CES and we pay TAFE to put that course on for us, for unemployed people. The people who get on the course must apply through the CES. Then those who are chosen to go on the course, we pay an allowance for them while they're training as well as giving them allowance to buy their books and equipment.